So Google just released Gemini 3.0 and this model is an absolute game changer. It's one of the strongest AI models available right now, especially for anyone building AI agents. So in this video, I'm going to show you why Gemini 3 stands out and why it's quickly becoming the go-to model for building complex AI agents, automations, and multi-step workflows. So whether you're using it in NADN or any other automation tool, this is the perfect model and I'm going to talk about why that is. So we're going to break down the key factors that make Gemini 3 so powerful, especially its ability to reason through multi-step problems, make decisions and handle real business tasks. Then I'll walk you through step by step how you can use it inside your NA10 with your AI agents. All right, let's get started. All right, so just to level this out a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and quickly walk through a few important points, especially when it comes to building AI agents. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you step by step how you can uh, use this inside NADN with your AI agent. So I want to walk through the setup and there's multiple ways to do that, but I'm going to talk about that. And then also how this is a perfect model when it comes to building agentic workflow, especially when it comes to multi agents, kind of like an orchestration agent. But anyways, don't worry about that. I'm going to explain everything step by step. Even if you're new to NADN, I'm going to talk, walk you through everything. But anyways, so let me quickly go through uh, this particular announcement. I'm going to put the link in the description for this. This is a blog that was released by Google. Of course, feel free to check it out, uh, especially this video. They put the yeah, there's really nice video so uh, kind of check that out because it kind of highlights the different aspects or the different things that this makes this model really, really state of the art but just a quick thing that I want to point out as you can see the benchmarks here it looks like it's beating all of the existing models including Claude Sonnet 4.5 and GPT 4.5.1 that was just released and as you can see as far as the all of the different parameters specifically when it comes to agentic workflows and or, or when it comes to multi-step reasoning that's where this becomes super interesting because again when you're building multi-step ai agents or when you're building complex ai automations your ai model the large language model that you're using is essentially the brain of your ai agent and therefore it needs to be incredibly robust especially when it comes to tool use so i'm going to go to the bottom and point out how uh Gemini specifically, I think if I click on plan anything here, um, so you can go through again, you can take a look at the details here, but Gemini essentially is built from ground up to be a multi-step reasoning model, meaning that it's able to follow instruction and it's able to utilize its brain or its training, its complex multi-step reasoning to be able to understand the task that the user is providing and therefore decide what it can use or what step to take next. Now, this is very, very important, especially when it comes to building a complex or a multi-state AI agent, right? So for instance, I'm going to talk about the more detail, but I just want to quickly point out something like an orchestration agent where you're giving the main AI agent the task to orchestrate which tools that it has access to to use based on the user's inquiry now obviously this is kind of like a personal ai assistant that i built uh, that we're going to go ahead and talk through a little bit as you can see right here so i've attached the gemini google chat model but essentially this is a good example of what a multi-step reasoning or why this is so important when it comes to building uh, the next era of ai agents which is all going to be kind of an orchestration lever in multi-agentic workflows right so that's why it's super important that the large language model itself is built from a ground up to understand and um, utilize the different tools that it has access to. And therefore, it should be trained in that particular reasoning or in that particular um, for that particular task in order to for it to be successful when you're building complex tasks, especially when it comes to real life businesses. So that's kind of like a quick overview. Like I said, I don't want to go into too much detail. You can take a look at the blog yourself and uh, see the different features. And they are uh, planning to release more models in the future. Uh, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But let's go ahead now and walk through step by step how to add this inside your uh, NA10 AI agent. So for those of you who are new to NA10, NA10 is a no code, the most powerful or the most popular um, no code platform when it comes to building AI agents. So I'm going to put the link in the description. You can go ahead and click on the uh, link to create a cloud account. And I'm going to, at the end of the video, I'm also show you how you can uh, create or uh, have your own VPS if you want to host anything there. But once you do that, so let me get rid of this. You're going to come right here. This is going to be your workflow. This is going to be your blank workflow. Uh, so let's go ahead and add our AI agent. So I'm just going to click on add first step. I'm just going to look for AI agent. There you go. So if I click outside of it, so this is what 
this looks like. So now it's just attached to a chat model or a chat message. Uh, the chat model itself, when I click on this, now all of these different options are going to be opened up for me. Now, there's two ways to add the Google Gemini 3.0 inside your AI agents with any of them. First is going to be using the Gemini chat model and then also open router. I'm going to walk you through both. Let me go ahead and first do open router because that's the simplest one. And then I'm going to show you step by step how you can use the Gemini chat model as well. <clears throat> all right. So from here, I'm going to click on open router here. Open router chat model. So for those of you who are not familiar with open router, open router basically gives you the ability to access all large language models, right? So if you go to openrouter.ai and you click on models, these are the different models that you have access to. That's kind of a good way to, um, you know, use all of these different models that are hitting the market or at least to test them out. So once you come here, uh, you're going to go and sign up for an account and create an API key. And then once you come back to your NA10, so you're going to click on credentials. You're going to click on new credentials. Just you add your API key. Obviously, you have to have a little bit of money there. Um, just put $5. It's not a big deal. Um, you won't be able, you won't run out, especially if you're using it inside your NA10. All right. So once you do that, once you have your account set up, then now you should be able to click on this drop down menu. So now all I have to do here is to search for Gemini dash three. And it should automatically pull this up if you connected your agent or your account correctly. So if I stop out of this, now you'll see if I click on open chat. Again, I'm not going to go through too many details, but I just want to show you uh, that it has access to this. Hey, how are you? There you go. Now your AI agent will reach out through open router chat model to that Gemini 3.0 and it will be able to respond. So when you see these green tick marks, it means that uh, you have, and then also a response right here. It means that that interaction was successful. All right. So that was step number one. Step number two. So let me get rid of that here is using the Gemini chat model. So you're going to click on the plus button here. You're going to click on Gemini chat model. Now this is going to pull up the credentials here. So let me go ahead and show you how to add this. So you're going to click on credentials. Obviously yours is going to look blank. I've already attached mine earlier, but you're going to click on new credential. So. <clears throat> You can click on NA10 AI and this will send you the setup instructions. But the easiest way to uh, access this is to go to aistudio.google.com slash API keys. Or if you just go to Google Studio, Google AI, or aistudio.google.com, it will bring you right here and you can click on get API key. Then you can click on create API key. You just you can just name this. I'm just going to say test. Select the cloud project. So if you already have an existing cloud project, just select that. If not, you can always create a new project. So go ahead and do that. I already have one. I'm just going to click on that. Create key. This is going to generate a new key. If you're in the free tier, this will just say free tier. That's fine. That's uh, you'll be able to use the free version here as well. I, I have the paid tier. And by the way, when you sign up for the paid tier, it gives you uh, $300 to use. So might as well use that. But anyways, once you do that, you just kind of click on, <coughs> let me see here. It's this one, copy key. I'm going to go back. You're just going to come back here, paste this, click on save. That's all you need, right? Very simple. Don't change the host. Don't change anything else. Everything is good to go now. And now if I go back here, well, I got all these automation, uh, auto <coughs> automatic pop-ups. Okay. So now that's good. It's connected. So now if I click on the drop down list here and search for Gemini dash three. There you go. So now you have access to Gemini three pro preview. Okay. So you're going to click on that. And now you have the ability to essentially interact with the same model there. All right. So now let me go ahead and show you how kind of adding uh, this in a more complex workflow makes sense. And I'm going to talk about the different details here. So I'm just going to go quickly to my classroom sections on my community. If I go to any then advanced level, by the way, if you're new to any then or you want to learn how to utilize any then AI agents, check out the community. I'm going to put the link in the description. But anyway, so I'm just going to come here. I built this AI agent army uh, a little bit ago. So I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom, click on any 10 blueprint. I'm just going to download this so I can bring this over. So I'm just going to come right here, import from file and just bring this. All right. So this is a uh, agent army or like, like a personal assistant AI agent that I had created a little bit ago that gives you, that basically gives me the ability to have this orchestration AI agent, uh, where I can interact with and it has access to multiple different sub agents, right? So as you can see right here, I have my personal expense AI agent, 
company knowledge AI agent, email agent, calendar agent. So this is like an ultimate, pers ultimate personal assistant. But the main agent, this orchestration agent, if I go inside this and I go inside this system message, basically I'm instructing this that your role is to efficiently delegate user queries to appropriate tool. You should never compose email, summarize content or whatever. Its job is to essentially orchestrate based on user's query to the different tools that's available that it has access to. The tool that it has available is the email agent, calendar agent, calculator, company knowledge, all of this stuff. The job of this orchestration agent is to basically delegate and use all of the different sub agent that it's had access to. Now, this is super important because if you have a chat model that is strong enough to understand, then the delegation works very smoothly, right? But if you have a large language model, in our case, I was using Anthropic chat model, but this is where, like I said, I can add my Google Gemini because this is essentially what it's made for. So if I get rid of this. Now, the reason why this is important is because, let me just add that chat model here, Google chat model, and I'm gonna use Gemini 3. All right, perfect. All right, so this is why I was mentioning earlier how if a model is built from ground up for this particular use case, then the entire automation and complex workflows like this uh, run very smoothly. It reduces hallucination. It reduces errors because this has the ability to have multi-reasoning and it's able to task to have multitasking skills, right? And it becomes extremely important for the model to have good tool use and understand based on the query, which tool to use and interact with in order to complete the task. So that's why, like I mentioned before, this concept of having a model that's built from ground up with this in mind becomes extremely important. Before, like I said, I've been testing this for a while now, uh, um, the different models that, that make sense when it comes to building complex, uh, uh, workflows with multiple AI agents and Tropic chat model called Sonnet 4.5 was the best model, to be honest. And I use multiple models, but honestly, I think Gemini based on what I'm seeing right now. And of course, I'm going to keep testing this as time comes by, but, uh, Gemini is going to really dominate the market if they're going to really use this moving forward because they understand that the future of uh, workflows, the future of automation, the fu future of AI models are going to be multi-agentic workflows or they should be built to have the ability to interact with different tools to be able to have sub agents and therefore have the model understand what the user is asking and delegate the different tools or to delegate to different uh, areas so it uh, completes the task without any hallucination by reducing the errors. And another important aspect of this is that everything in here specifically, uh, we're a lot of times we're reaching to different API endpoints. We're reaching to chat, uh, to different, um, uh, resources and applications. So it needs to be able to understand that and utilize the tools properly. So that's why, like I mentioned, I'm going to keep testing this and in the next coming uh, few com uh, upcoming days, and I'm going to figure out exactly where the limitations are, where the use cases are. But so far, what I'm seeing, this is extremely encouraging. And I think Google understands that where the future is going and they have the resources and the tools to be able to meet the demands of the future, especially as we head towards kind of an agentic and uh, AGI future. So feel free to check that out. And if you're interested in joining the community to learn more, feel free to check out the community as well. I'm going to put the link in the description. We also show you how you can utilize and start your AI agency and earn money with NADN and AI agents and no code tools. Check out the community. Also, I'm just going to quickly, for those of you who are interested in hosting NADN on your own virtual private server, because as, as we know, as uh, time moves on and these AI models are hitting the market, a lot of times it's uh, your data, the privacy of your data becomes extremely crucial. So I use Hostinger uh, virtual private servers to host my own NADN AI agents. So they right now they have a Black Friday sale that's still going on. So if you're interested in uh, taking advantage of that, go ahead and please check it out. I'm going to put the link in the description. Uh, Hostinger is our main channel sponsor. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. Click on the link in the description. It will bring you right here. So KVM2 is their best model. And right now they have, like I said, the best uh, deal going on. So I'm just going to choose this plan right here. 
So you're gonna click on this. They have eight gigabytes of RAM and two vCPUs, which is plenty. So another thing is, once you come here, you can cho choose the period. I would suggest going with 24 months because you have the best uh, deal here. And then on top of that, if you click on have coupon code and type AI workshop and click on apply, this will give you an additional 10% off. So shout out to Hostinger for providing us a discount code. So once you do that in the bottom, depending on where you're located, they have multiple servers all over the world. And on application, make sure you select an NADN here. So afterwards, all you have to do is click on continue. This will open up your account. So if you already have an account, sign in. If not, register. I already have an account, so I'm just going to quickly sign in. All right. So after you sign in, go ahead and fill your billing address and then also the payment and then click on install. And that will take like a minute or two to install uh, the NADN for you. Okay. So once you get that installed, this will, it will bring you right here. So all you have to do is click on manage here and this will open up your dashboard. Now, obviously yours is going to look blank, but since I've been using it for a while, mine has all of this different data here, but in order to launch your NADN, all you have to do is click on manage app here, and this will basically launch your NADN. If this is your first time, this is going to tell you to go ahead and sign up for an account. But if you already have an account, this will ask you to sign in. So I already have an account. I'm just going to click on sign in. So this is going to bring in now it's going to open up your uh, account here. So all you have to do is click on create workflow. And this is where now you have the ability to basically utilize the same thing AI agents on all of the integration with N8N, -N, but with the advantage of your hosting this on your own private servers and cloud. So feel free to check that out. Uh, make sure you like subscribe because I've got, like I said, a, a lot more videos that I'm going to make about uh, Google Gemini and NADN and creating uh, kind of complex workflows that you don't want to miss. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.